On today's episode, can AI fix aviation and Boeing? Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. You know, sometimes it's hard for me to suppress a desire to throw a brick through my laptop screen. Now, I follow news sources the same way everyone else does with a focus on major engineering disciplines like automotive and aerospace. And right now, it's fashionable to pile onto Boeing, which is understandable given the several egregious and unforced errors the company has made in the last few years. To be clear, when a pilot taxis a 737 into the mud or an engine ingests a bird on takeoff or a tire blows, I'm not inclined to scream that this is evidence that Boeing is in a catastrophic state. But there are some hard realities about commercial aviation that no one wants to talk about, and they should be. So I'll introduce a couple. One, fly-by-wire originally meant the replacement of hydraulic lines and cables with control currents running through wires to actuators at the control surfaces. They originally worked through simple analog to digital converters, but now those signals are intermediated by sophisticated software. If you want a left bank, you turn the yoke and an encoder sends a signal to a processor set which decides if the action is appropriate and then sends a message to aileron actuators to deflect. Now that's fine, but with the autopilot taking over more and more of the operation of the aircraft, the industry is dependent on control laws that have to make sense out of potentially erroneous inputs. Airspeed, altitude, and angle of attack are, of course, critical, and so there are multiple input systems for redundancy. So what does the software do with those inputs? Cross-check them to see if they agree, average them, isolate one that differs widely from the others? Well, systems may use all of these strategies, but no matter how robust the code is, algorithms do a poor job of coping with crises that were not predicted by engineers. Now, error-checking algorithms help solve this problem, but they also may introduce new issues themselves. Computer code has become so bloated and gigantic that it's almost impossible to properly test it today. Now we see that in the software that we use every day. If ever there was a beneficial use case going forward for artificial intelligence, it's as a quality control system to improve software for critical applications like aviation. Two, there's a universal rule about government regulation. For every problem it solves, it creates at least one new one. Now, there was a time that a pilot earned a commercial license at a multi-engine rating, and the company he flew for took over the rest of the training burden. How much experience they needed in the right seat of a new aircraft before they took command was not standardized. Regulatory authorities worldwide decided that specific minimums for pilot training and type approval for new aircraft types were needed, and they regulated accordingly. Now, this created significant training costs for airlines, and in the case of low-cost airlines, it generated a tremendous incentive to operate a single type across an entire fleet, perhaps the most famous example being Southwest. So when Boeing extensively modified the 737 yet again to create the MAX series, to keep their customers happy, it was essential that the new airplane handle in ways similar enough to the old one that the FAA didn't regard it as an entirely new airframe. And thus, software came to the rescue, making new airplanes handle in ways familiar to an existing 737 pilot. Minimizing transition training is always a sensible thing to do, but the unintended consequence of this was that it created a potential failure point that resulted in two tragedies. Now, AI may come to the rescue here again. By working through billions of potential disaster scenarios and determining what the effective level of regulation should be, now it's possible that in the near future, removing the pilot altogether may be the route toward aviation safety. No doubt the regulatory authorities worldwide will make sure that the legal framework lags the technology by a decade or two, but I think the military aviation community will embrace AI with both hands and sooner than we think. And if you don't think that the world's airlines wouldn't love to permanently furlough every pilot on the payroll, I have some soft land in Florida to sell you. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.